from Dr. Perun. Thank you very much for being around. And uh, my question uh, is really a commentary and is on the response, on the kind of response, on the way you have to respond to your questions. Uh, you have almost based all your arguments or you are always, always falling back on the Constitution. Uh, some of the people I have argued with, maybe there are one or two here, is it's not the weakness of the Constitution necessarily that have caused the, the problems that have been the UK. It's not the absence of law that have, has caused the issues we have in UK. We've always been told by the law, I cannot learn anywhere in Kenya. And yet, we have never been told a murderer gets away. And yet, they go on and land. My father got land in Red Valley for us. It was taken away. I got land at the coast. And at one time, it's still there, but I can't use it. And yet, the Constitution assured that. The law never say an ambition still. Yet, they do. So, to me, it's not. It's a question of uh, the law is an ass. Anybody can write it. <laughs> and it's not the Constitution. Because the Constitution, the paperwork has always been there. It has just has never, nobody has ever had the will to implement the law or to implement the Constitution. Actually, I do not remember any one time when anybody was allowed to do certain things that we are saying. And every time you say, well, the Constitution will take care of that. The previous Constitution had some of those provisions. Now, that's my first comment. You asked about the Constitution. If you had me good, it gives us the broad legal framework. Yes, it is not the absence of the law, but it's the deviousness of the human mind, of the criminals in us, moving ahead of the law and taking up uh, advantage of weak institutions and a weak legal framework. If you want to know that the Constitution has something to do with it, look at the recent interviews of the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice. Would that have happened under the old order? I just want to show you that it does open doors and we'll keep on referring to it. Under the old Constitution, Titles to land were sacred, even if obtained by fraud, even this a first registration. This constitution, the section I mentioned, 40, Article 40, subsection 6, clearly says that if you have obtained the title illegally, it will not be protected. It does expand the boundaries. It does give us the framework to start on this journey. I have clearly said that we need to work on it. That's why there's a call to duty. A constitution, however well written, needs to be activated by the beneficiaries of that framework. It does open the doors, it does expand the boundaries, and that's why together we've been looking for it for that long. That's why together, despite great discouragement, a majority of Kenyans almost three quarters woke up to vote for that document. They believe it opened doors and they're right because we have seen doors begin to open. Remember, the trigger that made me resign as a minister was opaque appointment of judges, refusal to follow the reform path. When a judiciary is rotten and you continue to add inappropriate people do an opaque method, you compound the problem instead of beginning to solve it. We are now beginning with vetting. Not just vetting of those being employed now, even those who are in employment. Believe you me, it has something to do with the Constitution, and it also has something to do with my effort, your effort, to make it work. And that is why there's that call to duty. The previous constitution concentrated power in the presidency. We didn't know the characters who would be appointed. You just had them on radio, and there's nothing you could do to challenge those appointments. 
Now there is a mechanism, the judges of the Supreme Court are being challenged because there are isn't one third women in the list of appointees. What a beautiful day. You saw the Director of Public Prosecutions is appointment being challenged. Whether those challenges succeed is not the point. But the fact that us Kenyans, we no longer can feel helpless. We have a means of pushing our issues. We have a means of getting hurt, of making our point. Even if Tobiko ends up being appointed, he is going on notice, knowing Kenyans are watching, knowing the one is given that will make him watch his time. He is going knowing that he accounts to Kenyans, not by those who had either obeyed for his appointment or assisted with it. And the same goes for the Chief Justice and the Deputy. I don't want to go on and on, but I want to show you it has something to do with the legal framework that have, uh, opens the boundaries, but it also has to do with our effort. And that is why we must check, even as we devolve to the counties, that we do not devolve bad habits and corruption, that we put individuals who can take advantage of that uh, framework, legal framework that is there to improve our lot. It is our responsibility. When as farmers, we pray for rain. Unless if you get out to plant, even if you fast and remain on your knees, it is clear that if God helps those who help themselves, the framework is there. We still have to work at it. That's the conclusion of our